Okay, I'm going to show you the Highlander log building method. It's a system that I've developed over many, many years of log building. It has some advantages over normal or traditional log building in that it's very fast, firstly. And importantly for me, it minimizes a lot of the heavy lifting involved. And I've got to look after my back. Also, to be honest, minimizes the level of expertise necessary. So if you're new to log building, it's worth considering this system. Now I've been commissioned by a customer to do a really small cabin. And I'm going to use the Highlander method. So I'm going to use the opportunity to show you the way through the whole system start to finish on this real life build. It's worth mentioning that even though this is a very small cabin, this system is completely scalable. You can make any size of cabin, multiple rooms, etc, etc. So just to be clear, I'm not sure if anyone else is using this system or a system close to it. I put it together myself, but I'd be very surprised if there wasn't someone building in a similar manner somewhere else in the world. So here you'll see me laying out a frame of 2x4s in preparation for the project. In order to understand why I'm doing that and to understand the system in general, I think I'll give a brief history of how the Highlander method took shape in the first place. Here's a building that uh, I worked on back around 2010. The mission statement, you could say, of the company I was working with at the time was to build unusual log structures, so it was a perfect opportunity to innovate. As you can see, the back half of the building above the stonework was done using normal round log and saddle notch construction. But at the front we wanted as much glass as possible to look out onto the, the view of the lake. So I opted to use vertical logs in between the window to maximize the window area. So the next project that's relevant to the development of the technique was a small barbecue structure that I built in 2015. Here I realized that as long as I built a base layer of locked together logs and then a very sturdy roof structure that tied all those logs together at the top, I could actually build the whole building using these vertical logs. Then in 2016 I was commissioned to do a much larger project using nice old reclaimed logs and although I elected to do three sides of the building using traditional uh, lock notch, I believe it's called, method, I wanted to use the vertical log somewhere so I decided to do the front face of the building using the vertical log system. By this point I started to realize the considerable benefits of using this vertical log system with horizontal log infill. It was much faster but almost as importantly I really liked the look of the end result. So when 2017 came around and I was again commissioned to do quite a large building with multiple rooms I decided to use the standing logs throughout. Again I used a couple of rounds of logs jointed in the normal way as a base and then standing posts. It was fast to build, it was easy and fast to take down and to transport. Once on site it was fairly easy to put up, put up as well and this was all done single handedly.
So back to present day, April 2020. I've got the 2x4 frame leveled and squared. I'll explain a bit more about that in a minute, but first have to make the first post. So for some of these cuts I'll be using the mini mill guide system, but it's not really necessary. In subsequent posts I will use different techniques to show how it can be done freehand as well. So the date now is about the 5th of April and I've been commissioned to do this really nice little building. It's going to be nice and quick and I thought it would be an ideal time to show this system and I've simplified it even further. As you see what I've done is I've got 2 by 4s laid out, screwed down in the shape of the building actually on the center line of the walls, where the walls will be. The first post put in, and as you see, just cut out the two by four shape at the bottom. And with all the posts doing that, that um, keeps the, ties all the logs to get the posts together at the bottom as I've done in the previous projects by actually doing the first round or two of logs in the normal traditional way. This time I'm going to try try this. Now this building, I'll be building it here and then breaking it down and taking it to the, to 
to the build site which will be nice and easy because all the logs are going to be short we're going to have a door in this side so there'll be a corner post and then a post where the door starts a post on the other side of the door then a slightly longer run to the corner and I'll mirror that on the back wall so opposite the post for the for the door on the left hand side there'll be another post directly opposite same again on the other side of the door so that it's easier to tie them all together at the top you'll see how that works I'm actually expecting the logs to get delivered they're 100, 100 years old um, logs what's called Belka. Kind of a, this is an example of very bad condition Belka logs. So it's a log where the two, two sides are taken off to make it flat on the inside and outside of the wall. These ones here I'm just using as a base, as a place to put the logs that are coming, which are much, much better condition. 100 years old. We found the date on one of the logs, it was 18, 1821. So that's when the previous house was built with these logs. Some of these logs look like from the grain that they're, they were 100 years old when they were cut down to build that house. So very nice wood. Should be arriving any minute. And then we'll get going. So now I have logs, I can start building the first section of wall, which will be approximately one meter in length on the back side of the building. And here's where we really start to see the benefits of this system. When building log buildings normally, you have to build one layer all the way around. And the first two logs, on, which will be on opposite sides of the building, would be half logs, after which you have to monitor the size of the logs that you put on so that all the walls rise and level fairly evenly. That's totally unnecessary with this system. However, the first log on each section of wall has to have the, its base leveled, cut straight. So I've selected a log that actually had a little bit of damage on the bottom edge, which I can cut off. So cut the bottom off of that log, it's reasonably flat, it's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be. Nothing in this method needs to be perfect. Draw on the couple of lines. All I did was just check that the log is roughly vertical, spirit level, and the reason I'm using this spirit level is because it's five centimeters wide, so I can just get it set up by eye, roughly in the middle, check that the, check that it's vertical again, so it's parallel with the edge of the log. And draw the lines, both lines at the same time. And then I'll cut it. What I'm gonna do is cut about five centimeters deep. I'll maybe cut a little bit more, and then take these corners out, making the tongue to go into the groove in the post. But it's all going to be done by eye, nothing needs to be perfect, as you'll see. So this first log's in, and I'll put the second one on. You can see this big gap. I've looked at the gap in between the logs as well. It's actually not too bad. There's one gap that's a bit too big here. There, there. So all I've done is run the thing, run the pencil along these sides. Fix that before I fix that.
Okay, that's better. It doesn't need to be perfect because there's going to be insulation going in between there. So now, I know how much length has to be taken off of that the tongue. It's the place here with the maximum gap, which is here. So that's roughly how much. I'll take that off. Now this isn't terribly tight, but it shouldn't be. Because when we put this together on site, this is going to have to have insulation in here. So you want a little bit of room. Okay, so we're coming up to 17 minutes on this video. I'm going to have to do this in more than one part. I'll post this part now, and uh, as soon as I get the next part edited, I'll post that as well. It's actually the 14th of April, 2020, as I edit this so I'm now about a week further on in the project than you've seen I'll get that posted as soon as I can uh, if you want to be notified notified when it's posted then I think you know how to do that in the next video I'll also recap a little bit about the procedure when putting on each log I don't think I covered it very well okay we'll see you on the next one